And I think we're live. I think we are. A very uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm Councillor Phil Broadhead. I'm the Deputy Leader of the Council and I'm joined here today by Councillor Nicola Green, who's a portfolio co uh, holder for all things COVID. And we're here today with our regular Facebook Live session. We're here for half an hour to be able to ask, uh, answer any questions you've got uh, about all things uh, BCP Council, but we're probably with a particular reference on, on COVID because that's still very at the forefront of all of our minds at the moment. Um, so you have the ability on Facebook Live to enter your questions into the chat bar. Please feel free to enter your questions. We'll try and get through as many as we can. Uh, they do pop up very quickly, so we'll, we'll do our best. Um, we won't get through all of them, but we also do have a, a council team that are able to help answer questions that we don't quite get round to. So uh, please be assured that if we can give you an answer, we'll try our very best. We're collectively trying to bring a little bit of festive cheer into what has been an interesting 2020, I think we can all point out. Um, so keep the comments nice about my jumper in particular. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we'll do is answer your questions today and also try and give a little bit of a summary on where we see things, what the state of play is at the moment, to try and give you as much information as possible. So to start with, I think I'll pass over to Nicola, who will be able to give a little bit of a summary about where we are in the, in the, the, the COVID world at the moment. Thank you. Welcome, Nicola. Thank you and good afternoon everybody. Um, we've all become um, data experts, haven't we, um, since we've been looking at um, COVID rates. So I thought I'd give you just a very brief update of, of where we are today. Um, currently the rates per 100,000 uh, of the population across BCP is 63 um, in terms of uh, recently reported um, COVID positive tests. Um, for those of you who have followed the data, you will be aware that this is actually less than a third of the figure that we were at um, prior to the previous lockdown. So there's a lot of positive news to be, uh, to be found in that. We know that um, the lockdown has made a difference and we know and we have reason to be very grateful to people who've made some sacrifices to follow the rules. Um, but we know that the, um, the rate at which that um, number has been reducing has started to slow down. I think that's you know, in, inevitable statistically, I'm sure somebody will tell me. Um, but actually it shows that um, there is still more to do um, and it doesn't put us um, right at the very bottom of the rates around the country. And you would have seen that a number of places are experiencing um, rises in their population and uh, in the uh, positivity rates and the government is in, imposing further restrictions on those areas. So we were expecting um, discussions to be taken at a national level today. Um, it looks as though those will be taken, the decision will now be taken tomorrow. And at that point, we will have um, further updates about any potential change in the tiering that we're in. Thank you, Nicola. So, yeah, I mean, to, to underline that, it, it looks like good news, doesn't it? Obviously, we're now at 63 per 100,000. That's down from 85 uh, from per 100,000 last week. Uh, you look at how that compare, and actually, you then look at the uh, the number of uh, patients that are in hospital. It was 127 last week, and it's down to 88. These are quite positive um, uh, figures, but of course, as we all know, things can change. Uh, very very quickly so particularly as we enter this this festive period we'd continue to urge everybody to follow all of the guidance and the rules not least because that will help us to make the case um, for, for moving down the tiers as, as we go forward. As Nicola has pointed out, um, we're now getting the announcement if there will be any changes tomorrow. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that we're, we're not necessarily expecting any changes. There's a question here from uh, Chris Lee in the, in the message bar um, about well, will we be in tier three? I mean, that looks quite unlikely. There are a number of areas in the country that have gone from tier two to tier three, so the wrong direction. But of course, that's because their caseloads uh, and, and prevalence of the virus has been increasing. It's, it's quite the opposite down here. We have seen a decrease. So what we continue to push for, particularly to help support of all of our local businesses that are really continually severely affected um, by the ongoing pandemic, we will continue to push, if possible and if safe, to move down into tier one, uh, but of course um, uh, things change on a, an almost daily basis and, uh, and uh, we'll just have to keep all pulling through together. So um, going through to the, um, uh, the, the questions that we've got, we've, we've got a question about the, um, which is not COVID, but it's, uh, yeah, from uh, Saroma about the e-scooters e trial that is coming. Um, I think this is, this is broadly positive news, as, as people may know, the government has 
uh, given permission to a number of different areas, particularly urban areas around the country, to be able to undertake the trial of e-scooters. Uh, and they're the scooters which are electric powered uh, and we've been successful in uh, being selected to have a trial for this but it is quite regulated so this will be using our partner who are uh, Beryl and many people will know the green Beryl bikes that are all the way through Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul uh, they are already uh, have the infrastructure in place so um, from, from next month uh, there will be a number, I think it's around 25 scooters that would be launched on a trial basis that you'll be able to use to zip your way across many of the more urban areas. I think it's been rolled out in one, one area of the conurbation. The plan is um, that if that's successful it can go uh, elsewhere, but of course it will be strictly monitored. So in order to um, actually rent one of these scooters you'll, you'll have to have a driver's license, um, obviously insurance will come with it, you'll have to follow all of the rules of the road and crucially they'll be tracked. So some people are massively for this, some people are slightly more dubious, but I think anything that can help us in the effort for sustainable travel, um, let's try it, let's do it in a, in a careful way, um, but that will be launched, I think, initially in, in Bournemouth and Poole for, from next month. Yeah, I think there's been quite a, quite a lot of great legitimate concerns about the safety of them, and I think those restrictions that have been put in, that you can only use them if you've got a driving licence, um, and that they will be restricted when they do go on the um, on the seafront and so on in terms of speed. I think those things have been considered. So it's really quite an interesting um, proposition for um, BCP to find out what it is we really think about e-scooters. Yeah. And I thought I'd give a little bit of an update to businesses out there because we talked about the, the ongoing problem that many of our industries are facing um, with, with the continued global pandemic. Um, we've all seen the, the various different grant schemes that have been out there to help in, in, in some way to businesses have been affected. But as we've discussed previously, there are a number of, of key businesses and key sectors, particularly in the Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole area, that have either been um, particularly hard hit and not had the support probably necessary for them to try and make it through this, this critical winter period, and also that add some real positivity to the local economy and a, a pretty unique selling points that we have as, as, a, as, a, as a local area. Um, so we've talked previously about having a discretionary fund from them. Government's been very generous. They've given us around £16 million in total um, for a progression of different grant schemes that we've been able to launch. So we started it with the um, uh, initially with the, um, the local restrictions grant. That was for specifically for people that had had to close. Um, we've then extended that to what's called a local restrictions grant. We've recently had stream one of that that has been launched and is still open. That's been for businesses that haven't previously been able to claim support because they don't claim business rates. That's for them to help, so do check out the website if you qualify in that area. But I'm really delighted to launch that our main discretionary scheme, which we're calling Stream 2, um, will be launched hopefully this Friday. And the idea of this scheme is to, in a hopefully very meaningful way, to try and help some of the businesses that I mentioned have been the hardest hit. So things like our nighttime economy and nightclubs, which actually employ uh, a hell of a lot of people across the Bournemouth Christ uh, Church and Pool area and have a big impact on the rest of the economy. Our events industry has been particularly hard, hit hard. Our travel industry, our aviation industry, and, uh, and they've been crying out for help for some, some time. I'm delighted we'll be able to launch this scheme on Friday. I'm particularly uh, delighted that this will be meaningful amounts of money, so either 2,500, 5,000, 10,000 or 25,000 depending on the size of the business and how hard it's been hit. Um, and, and of course um, we are actually also one of the first in the country to be able to get that scheme out, so getting money to those businesses that have been the hardest hit. So um, watch this space, more information will be on the website for those businesses from Friday, um, but I'm really delighted to, to help those that have either been really hard, um, uh, uh, badly hit, have been slightly left behind before, or at a really critical stage of the future. So we're now getting that help directly to you, so that, that is on the way. And I will um, endeavour, um, Mr D'Souza, for, um, to uh, project my voice rather better, and apologies, I am now closer to the microphone. Um, there's been a question about um, testing for um, care workers and, and so on, and I think the, uh, the rollout of the rapid tests is coming our way, but it is still being uh, dealt with um, on a national basis. And therefore, we've not had um, a great rollout of that, um, except perhaps to the universities. Um, and that's been the position in Dorset so far. You'll be aware that there's been a lot of emphasis on rapid tests being used in areas which are currently in Tier 3. Um, the, um, the point that I would also like to raise um, about people really to 
give some thought to people's expectations about visiting care homes over Christmas, which is something that I know we're, you know, we really, really want to get moving, um, is to contact the care home directly. Um, that's probably your, your best way to find out what their particular rules are and what it is they can offer you in terms of visiting your loved ones. And I suppose we ought as well to mention that there is um, the vaccination programme has gone live across yeah. Dorset and we know that there are some uh, members of our community who are being invited through to having their, uh, their vaccination. Members of my family are, are having it today. But it will come through your primary care network unless you're a key worker and perhaps it will come through your workplace. So um, this is being rolled out by NHS England. The role of the council is really just to make that as easy as we possibly can when we're asked to provide volunteers, for example. Um, so it is being led by the NHS, but we are aware, which I think we weren't a few days ago, of people actually getting the injections and, the, and you know those coming through. And we look forward to those being rolled out even further. Yes, thank you, Nicola. Just uh, responding to, to Spencer um, uh, Fordham about the, the, the Stream 2 discretionary scheme, um, really pleased to hear that you're happy with that. And yes, the language school sector is on that discretionary scheme. We've identified that as one of the key areas that, 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 that really needs our support at this time because we're, I think people often forget about the, the, the language school se se sector and how much of an impact that has um, uh, in this area. And it's been something that has been one of our real selling points for some time. Just, just carrying on from that um, uh, point about the, the vaccination programme, I mean, isn't this the, the good news that we need as we enter into 2021, which hopefully will be an entirely different year? than 2020. Um, of course, it doesn't mean that the risk is gone. So until we can, until that vaccination programme is, is meaningfully out there, and particularly as we continue through this winter period, it really, really is um, really important that we continue to follow all of the rules. Because the last thing we want when we're at this final hurdle is to start going backwards. And we heard earlier on in the Facebook Live session that the rates have been coming down in this area. That has been down to the, the hard work, the resilience, and, and frankly, the, uh, the, the, the discipline of people in the area following the rules. The vaccination programme is now getting out and it's getting out live, but it is going to take some time. Having said that, it is great that we are one of the areas that is launching. Uh, my, my, own, my, my wife's actually a GP and her surgery is launching it today. And there are a number of different uh, GP surgeries that are out there that are, that are already getting those jabs into people's arms. Um, as Nicola said, they will contact you. So don't ring them. Um, they've, they've got a, a list of, of the starting with the most vulnerable first and age brackets and things. Uh, and of course, they can only um, uh, vaccinate with the number of actual vaccinations that they have. So they will be contacting you as and when that works through the system. In the meantime, let's all pull together and make sure that we don't start going backwards and give up on that progress that we've managed to have lately. And on that point, Steve Tallamy's asked a question about the COVID wardens, um, and I think they have been successful um, in that they've provided a visible presence. They are there, um, you may see them when you're out in your high streets or in the town centres. Certainly, they, uh, we um, first established them right at the beginning or right prior to um, the previous lockdown. Um, at the very beginning of November, when we were concerned perhaps about the nighttime economy, particularly around Halloween um, and coming up for bonfire night. So that's where they were first deployed, you know, to remind people about what the rules were and to you know, make sure that, that people weren't gathering in large numbers. So they are, um, we had seven originally, and then by the beginning of this month, we'd increase that to 13, so virtually doubling the, uh, the capacity. And they're out and about, and they will be there until the beginning of the new year. So another busy night for them, I'm sure, will be New Year's Eve. Um, but there are many shopping days uh, remaining till Christmas. And of course, we want to be out doing those things that we can safely. As, and as I think Phil's alluded to a number of times, our businesses need that support. It's not just the businesses, it's the livelihoods of our, our friends and neighbours who depend upon those businesses um, who need the support. Um, and the COVID marshals are there to, to make sure that the rules are observed and uh, that people feel safe and confident when they're out. And on that point about our businesses, um, I, I sound like a bit of a broken record of this, but across the, the Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole area, we don't just have Bournemouth High Street, Poole High Street 
and, and, and Christchurch. We've got 17 different high streets of all different flavours um, that really need our support at the moment. It's why we've launched the, uh, the, the Shop Local campaign, uh, the Rediscover Safely, which is all about getting out there and supporting your local high streets um, as, as much as possible. Because boy, do they need it at the moment. You know, one of the, one of the positives of being in Tier 2 rather than a lot of the country that's in Tier 3 is that a number of our hospitality and retail and things, things that have to close in some of the other tiers are still open and they put a tremendous amount of effort into being COVID safe, COVID secure. As Nicholas pointed out, we've got our COVID marshals out there to make sure that, that things are, 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 are as safe as possible. Um, so actually, it is possible to get out there at the moment and do your Christmas shopping, support our local high streets, whether it's the big ones or the many small ones, because they're all open and they need our business to get through this Christmas period. Um, also, we don't want to give all of our money to the big internet giants, do we? Um, you know, we've got some fantastic independents out there offering all sorts of things. So um, uh, let's get out there and support them. Spend loads of money this Christmas uh, to help our local um, our local businesses and also because I think we just need to give each other lots of gifts because we just need some positivity as well don't we so uh, let, let's try as much as possible to uh, to support our local economy. Yeah and I think we're you know we're focusing on what we can do within the uh, within whichever tier we're in I and mean, there's been discussion in the um, in the feed about should we be in tier one should we be in tier three um, whereas you know I think the likelihood is as we've often found ourselves that we're somewhere in the middle um, but whichever tier it is, there are rules which you know will allow us to socialise with our families, with our well, within our households. Um, and you know, if you if you find that if you feel that the Christmas bubble is for you, and it won't be for everybody, um, you know, there are further opportunities there, and businesses will be very very pleased to see. I have no doubt. Um, but you know, on that point, I think you know it, it is worth saying. And if the um, if the director of public health were here, I'm sure he would be saying the same thing. Whereas I wouldn't normally speak for anybody else. It's you know there are rules there. There are some relaxations um, over Christmas, which for some people will be absolutely crucial. You know, if you haven't, if you feel that it's really important to your welfare, the well-being of your family, then those rules have been relaxed within reason um, for that purpose. But you know, some people will feel actually for me, for us, it's right not to extend our circle for those few days, um, and actually we prefer, and, and that's fine too. Yeah. So for those of us joining us, welcome. I'm Councillor Phil Broadhead, the Deputy Leader of the Council. This is Councillor uh, Nicola Green joining me, who's um, our Cabinet Member for COVID Resilience. We're here for our regular half-hour session to answer your questions, give you an update on the state of play, particularly regarding the COVID situation. So if you are just joining us, you're very welcome. We have Apologise um, to from all the comments about my, my, my jumper. It's not going down particularly well, um, but it's nothing that I don't hear at home. Um, so I'm more than happy to to hear your um, questions. Uh, one just come through from Sean Haywood about whether we are still on tier two or whether we have moved. Um, the government has has uh, changed the announcement. The announcement will be coming now tomorrow. So at present we're still in tier two, as we heard earlier on. We've seen quite a, a positive decrease in the case levels and also the number of people with COVID in hospital. Um, on, on a week by week basis and that has continued over the past week so we'll, we will continue to lobby if um, uh, all the powers that be think it's safe for us to go into tier one um, but as things stand we are still in tier two and I don't think we're necessarily thinking that's going to change uh, immediately. There's a question that's come through from Sarah Churchill around uh, a, a, a bit of a, um, a, 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 an unusual question and not many people will know about this but it's about selective licensing and why selective licensing um, uh, was on the agenda. Well, Sarah, um, what I will say is that, uh, as you probably know, we've had a change of administration. So where the, the new administration that has come in um, over the last couple of months, the selective licensing was something that was pursued by the previous administration. And we've now got some decisions about whether to take that through or not. I, I think I'm, I'm pretty safe to say at this time that a number of us um, are, are very uh, dubious about selective licensing. And I don't think it's going to be a priority for this new administration and carry forward. For those that don't know what selective licensing is, that is um, essentially uh, uh, forcing uh, rented properties in certain areas to have to register for a scheme which costs the landlords a certain amount of money and of course whilst it, any um, licensing process has its benefits of being able to keep track a little bit more uh, of things and standards what it does tend to do is actually put the financial burden, it just transfers straight from the landlords onto the tenants and there is a real danger with things like selective licensing that they end up punishing the poorest 
Um, I think we've got much more uh, creative and clever ways of ensuring that standards are raised in the private, private, rented, se private rented sector. We've got a fantastic team at the council. Um, in the previous authorities we had things like the Operation Galaxy which was a way of doing exactly what selective licensing does. Um, without burdening um, the, the, the poorest with the inevitable knock-on financial consequence. So I, I think it's very likely that that's not something that we will be pursuing. Right, um, moving, moving on to other questions. Keep your questions coming thick and fast. We're about uh, 20 minutes in, we've got another uh, 10 minutes and we're happy to answer any questions you've got, particularly about COVID, but about anything else that the Council is, uh, is doing as well. And while we have a, a moment's pause, I'm going to put in a shameless plug for the um, the winter grant scheme, which is, uh, has come through. And this is, um, it, you may know of it through the Marcus Rashford scheme to um, promote um, uh, a, a resource which means that children don't go hungry um, through the school holidays, um, particularly children who are um, eligible for free school meals. And we've been allocating a nice amounts of money from government, which isn't something that we often say. But what that's enabling is a scheme for um, children who are eligible for free school meals to have um, vouchers of £15 per, per, per child per week, um, which will go to the parents or, or the carer. Um, to be spent in um, any supermarket and they can come into your phone, um, they can come in by email or you can have the, uh, the paper vouchers. So three days before the end of the term, what I'd like to remind you is if there's anybody who hasn't claimed their, um, their um, eligibility, and we've had fantastic take up I have to say, but there will still be some people who might not have thought about it. So you've got those few days left to do it through school and they are so efficient. Um, they really know um, how, to, how to push on through this. But there are other routes and you will find them on the council website through the Together We Can pages if you're unable to do it before the end of the term. But really if you know somebody this would be a really fantastic time to make sure that they've, you know, they've uh, really grasped that eligibility before the end of the term. Thank you, Nicola. There was a question a bit earlier, and apologies, I, I flipped through um, from Cheryl, uh, or Cheryl, uh, about the application process for discretionary grants for businesses that have, uh, do not have business rates but have been severely impact, impacted by the, the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, yes, Cheryl, that, that, those details are on, online and that, that, that grant has been now active for a couple of weeks. So that is under the additional restrictions grant, what we're referring to as the ARGs, and that's part of Stream 1. So Stream 1 is about those, for those businesses that don't pay business rates, that have either had to close as a result of lockdowns or have been severely impacted. And the criteria and how to apply, you can find that on the council website. I think it might even be bcpcouncil.gov.uk slash ARG, but don't quote me on that. If necessary, uh, Google it or one of the... Oh, it's, it's a forward slash ARG business. Um, and then you can find out more information about that. That's for those that don't pay business rates. And as I've said earlier on the Facebook Live, this Friday, this week, uh, we're intending to launch the phase two of that discretionary scheme that will give meaningful amounts of money to those businesses and those sectors that have been really, really um, uh, badly hit by COVID as well. Um, we've been listening to a number of them. Uh, we've been hearing that we're at an almost existential crisis with some of these businesses. And you know, as we talked about earlier on with the vaccines and some of that positivity on the horizon, we can try and just get through this winter period, uh, support our local business where possible. I've seen a number of comments about, about me saying spend loads of money. It was slightly tongue in cheek. Not everybody can, but we can all help in our own way uh, to help support those people, whether that's through volunteering, whether that's through shopping locally, uh, or whether that as a council is, is directly supporting those businesses that really need our help. We're all in this together and we've all got to pull, pull through it together. And uh, again, just one more plug, until the end of the week, our um, uh, family hubs, the children's centres, as many of us used to know them, uh, will be um, collecting, if you um, wish to donate, any presents for um, children from newborns up to older teenagers, and they will make sure that they, um, they get um, distributed to people who need them. And I have to say, that has been the most, it's truly magnificent, the response of um, the BCP community, people who have given of their time, um, they've given money to food banks and they've, get, they've donated gifts and so many things um, and they are going through to where there is need um, and thank you really for all, all that you've done. 
So for those that are just joining us, we've still got another five minutes. We're here to answer as many questions um, as, as possible on, on anything that the council does, but in particular regarding the, the COVID situation. Um, if, if you haven't um, gathered, we, we were, the government was intending to announce any changes to the tier restrictions today. That looks like that announcement is now going to be tomorrow. Uh, we're in probably a, a, not, you know, a, a slightly optimistic uh, position here in terms of the rates. They were at 85 per, per 100,000 last week. They've now fallen to 63 per 100,000. That is one of the lowest in the country. So well done to everybody that's continued to follow the rules and drive those rates down. And again, the hospital admissions uh, and, and patients in hospital has gone down from 127 to 88. Um, that does mean that we're in a, you know, a, a spot where that does continue to fall. There has been a slight level off in that falling. So we all just need to make sure that we don't do anything to put that continued fall at risk not just because it's all of our health um, uh, 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 concern, but also as the relaxations come in with Christmas, I'd love to be in a position, wouldn't we all, uh, that those rates continue to fall, we can move down into that tier one, we can open up a little bit more, which will um, A, give us all the freedom I'm sure we all, I'm sure we all want, but also help our business community as much as possible. So keep following the rules. We've got Christmas around the corner, as we've all heard, and the government has announced today there's no change to the formal, um, uh, to the relaxation of, of what are the formal rules around Christmas. However, there's a continued push that if you don't have to, and you, and you particularly if you're one of those that are at risk, just think sensibly. You know, we're all in this together. Um, we all take some personal responsibility for that. But of course, collectively, we wouldn't want to end up in a position where all bets were off for Christmas and then we end up with, with further lockdowns or anything. That, that wouldn't help anybody. So um, they're going in the right direction. Let's just keep it that way. And as we know, I don't like to um, uh, dismiss Phil's sunny optimism because I do share it in a lot of cases, but we do know that for many people, January and February are the hardest months. Um, Christmas is something that, you know, for many people, um, particularly, you know, you want the children and you really, really focus on. It's a great festive time of year. It's brilliant to be with our families. But don't forget that there's January and February to come and there are dark days. Um, and there are also plenty of grants which are available for winter warmth um, yeah. And you know, people who might be suffering, perhaps they get through Christmas, but then the financial difficulties might really start to hit. So the Let's Talk Money programme, which is run by Citizens Advice um, across BCP, um, has been running for quite some time. It's on their main um, switchboard number, um, and they are also administering some grants. Um, so should you or you know somebody who's struggling with their utility bills, particularly water, heating, um, access to getting your boiler service, that kind of things, um, and people are really, really struggling with them, please, please go to Citizens Advice because they, they're experienced people. They, they're used to this thing. For many, many people, this is the first time they experienced it, but you will be talking to people, um, the call handlers, who know what it is that they can do to help. Um, they have been funded through this government grant um, and they're there to help you. So, you know, please, and that, that, that applies to, you know, any, any type of need. Yeah, thank you, Nicola. Um, so the questions keep coming in. There's one from Steve Merritt about um, uh, bidding on, uh, on, on, on properties and moving into new accommodation uh, th through the crisis as well. Not aware that that has um, completely stopped, but what are, we'll, we'll take that one away. And if one of the team can't answer you directly uh, on, on the actual, uh, on the chat bar, um, then we'll try and, and get back to you on that. It's a complicated scenario. We're trying to still uh, do as many things as, as, as possible, continue uh, with, with business as usual, where possible but of course we are in a in a, in a very very diff different world um, we, we've spoken earlier on about the vaccination program and how uh, positive it is that the vaccination program has now started I think we need to obviously manage expectations that we're not all going to get jabs in our arm overnight um, there's a, a process that's going through this as uh, Councillor Green had mentioned earlier on this has been led by the NHS the, the, the councillor here in a support role to help with the uh, f uh, to facilitate where possible uh, and of course a lot of that is through the local GP surgeries as well so I know that a number of our GP surgeries across the Bournemouth Christchurch and Paul area are today commencing their vaccination programs they're getting the amounts through uh, on a day-by-day -day basis so they're having to make um, uh, those calls about how many they can accommodate as and when the vaccinations come in but I think the uh, it's obviously positive news but the the main message is don't contact them them, they will contact you. They're working very hard to prioritise those people 
that are at the most in need. And, uh, and if you are in that category, um, you, you will be hopefully top of that list and they'll be in contact as soon as they're able to. A lot of people to get through. And in the meantime, let's all um, uh, you know, to keep hammering home the message. Uh, stay safe in the meantime so that that can work through and hopefully uh, mean that 2021 can be a lot better than 2020. Right. Any? Um, we've got. We've, we've still got a, 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 a probably one more minute left for any any final questions um, that are coming through. Um, so we've we've had a bit of an update. Again, there's there's a question about the, uh, the 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 scooters that will be coming in. Will be we were one of the areas that's been chosen for the trial for e-scooters um, to put some people's minds at rest. Of course, that is not just a free-for-all, that is through our partners, Beryl, who have had the Beryl bike scheme. You have to have a driver's license, it'll be monitored, there's only a few to start with, it'll be um, trialled out in, in, a, in a select area to begin uh, before hopefully being extended. But of course, anything we can do in these times to continue with that sustainable travel, um, particularly as our roads get more and more congested, is good. It's not the answer for everybody, um, but we'll, we'll continue to push that. And of course, I suppose if there's one other positive of the, the pandemic, it, it's made us all alive the fact that there are other, are other ways to get around, particularly in the congested area that we, we have come through to. So it is it is 1.30. Uh, we've had half an hour of questions. Um, we do have a team that will continue to try and answer any questions that we have missed out because they do zip on the side of the screen. Um, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, but uh, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into what we're doing, uh, answered as many questions as possible. I'd like to finish by wishing you all a very Merry Christmas, uh, a very positive 2021. Stay safe, ho ho ho, and um, and have an enjoyable Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you.